Thank you so much, Romaine. And as you said, I am right next to Mark Mason, the Chief Financial Officer of Citigroup, in the middle of a massive transformation. But you know, I do want to start with what was happening today. There was kind of a big event here at the RBC Financial Services Conference, yes. and we saw something happen that has been happening more and more at conferences like this, which is uh, interruption from protesters worried about climate and climate financing. I want to be cognizant that there's another push on the other side of things here for big banks like yours not to step away from this energy transition that is going very slowly. So how do you navigate the pressures on both sides and do you find that it's intensified? Yeah, Shanali, first of all, thank you for having me. It's great to be here with you. We're here today, obviously, at a very important conference and an opportunity for me to update our investors on what's going on with Citi and our strategy. To your question, look, these are very important issues, right? And Citi takes them very seriously. Uh, we respect the, the activists' right to protest, and we want to hear their views and perspectives. But these types of issues, the clean energy transition, it's not something that happens overnight. And we've been very clear on the goals and targets that we've set for ourselves. And we've been working very closely with our clients to try and execute against that. And we're going to keep doing that. And again, as people feel like they need the opportunity to be heard, we want to hear what the views are. We'll incorporate those and continue to execute on our strategy. You know, I want to move here to the broader economic environment because I want to be cognizant that there are many risks under the surface here. You've held your view that Citigroup expects a mild recession yes. in the second half of this year. Yes. What are the newer risks that you're now seeing in the market that can complicate that point of view? Yeah, look, I think uh, when you look at what's going on globally and you look at the geopolitical situation as well as the macroeconomic factors, one thing that's very clear, and you can just look at the, the comments yesterday from uh, Chair Powell, is that the U.S. is going to be very resolute around monetary actions that allow for us to tame inflation. And I think that means that we're likely to see higher rates for longer. And we're going to have to manage through that. And if you look back historically in situations of high inflation, it's very seldom that you see a situation where it's resolved without there being a reduction in output. And so we are likely, our view is that we are likely to see a mild recession, likely in the back half of the year. I think what's important is that we're well positioned as a firm to manage through it. And we're very engaged with our clients in aiding them in managing the uncertainty as well. So to what extent then is the U.S. Central Bank, the direction of interest rates, the biggest risk to the market? Is Citigroup preparing for a terminal rate of 6% or anything higher than the market really is ex expecting right now? Well, we're preparing for all types of outcomes. We run, our, we run a stress against our portfolio all the time for various scenarios. Again, it's likely that we do see rates come in higher than we were expecting when we ended the year. We think that's likely to have an impact on GDP and result in a mild recession. But importantly, the balance sheets of both our corporate clients and the consumers remain very strong. And so the sense is that that's something that's quite manageable. So what does this mean for Citigroup? Because on one hand here, there's an expectation that some of the choppiness in the macro environment is going to lead to a drop off, maybe more than expected in some areas when it comes to investment banking and even trading. What does that mean for how you have to manage your headcount in that kind of environment? Yeah. Do you see Citigroup having to make further cuts ahead? Yeah. What, what's important here, again, is we talked last year at our investor day about our vision and our strategy, our vision to be the preeminent bank for clients with cross-border needs, our strategy for five interconnected businesses, and the opportunity that presents for us to generate higher returns in the medium term. This year, we saw rates increase significantly. When we stood on stage last year, we were expecting a year-end rate of 1.5 in Fed funds. We know it was significantly higher than that. What we've been able to demonstrate is the resilience, if you will, of our strategy, and frankly, the diversification of our platform. And I think that positions us again to work closely with clients throughout the year to ensure that we deliver. Now, to your point around our businesses, we saw exceptionally strong performance in our services business. These are our treasury and trade solutions business and our security services business. We grew 32% on the top line in TTS. We grew 15% in security services, both with existing clients and with new clients, as well as with middle market clients in our treasury and trade solutions franchise. Again, this highlights strength in that part of the franchise that frankly was
was able to offset the pressure that we saw in investment banking, but where those wallets were down 60 percent. For a headcount, do you then have to navigate around that, given the softness where you're seeing in investment banking in particular? Let's just stick to investment banking. So, so we've been doing lots of hiring over the past couple of years. We've really been trying to build out in areas where we've had uh, either a competitive advantage or an area we think su uh, suggests significant growth opportunities. So we've been investing in investment banking. We've been building out sectors where we needed to beef them up, sectors like uh, healthcare, like energy, like biotech, et cetera. And those areas, we think, in, as the market recovers, will bode well for us. But what the, what the environment we're managing through does suggest is that we may have to repace in certain areas across the franchise in light of things slowing down. And we'll do just that. We'll recalibrate as needed. Again, our strategy has to be around how do we protect the competitive strengths and advantages we have in parts of the franchise, and how do we shore up other areas so that collectively we're delivering and executing on improved returns over time. Speaking of improving returns, I mean, it's led to some tough conversations sometimes when it comes to managing risk in trading or leveraged loans. How much caution are you exhibiting in those businesses given the environment we're in? And frankly, after really, you had a knockout trading environment last year, what does it mean for this year? Do you still have to dial back on risk to kind of achieve growth there? Well, risk management is very important. We set risk parameters. We have a risk framework, risk appetite across our entire portfolio, and we make sure that we adhere to that through the cycle. We're very disciplined around that. We also make sure that we're using our balance sheet in a way where we can optimize returns. And so we talked about last year, uh, the increase in revenue to risk-weighted assets as a proxy for returns in our markets business. And that's in fact what we did. We dialed back use of balance sheet where we weren't generating a significant enough return for our investors and for ourselves. And we've targeted that to clients and to products and services where we can generate an appropriate return. And that's that's the type of discipline that you want when you're using capital and when you're doing that with regard to trying to generate accretive returns for shareholders. One more Teflon story here because you're still seeing so much pressure on the buy side, hiring the star traders out of the big banks. Uh, do you find that the talent war is still sticky on the top end? You know, how competitive do you have to be to bid for top talent in businesses like investment banking and trading still? Well, you, you have to be competitive. I mean, this is, this is a space where talent makes all the difference in the world. And it's one of the reasons why we've continued to hire in areas that we've needed to strengthen. Um, you want to be smart about that. You want to time that appropriately so that when the market does return, you're positioned to capture that upside, and importantly, you're positioned to serve both existing and new clients. And so that's the discipline that you're going to see us continue to exercise. Mm -hmm. We want to invest through the cycle, but in a very smart and way. And really quickly here, Mark, you know, there's a lot of conversation on Wall Street about people moving outside of New York. You know, you guys have this new huge headquarters in New York, but what kind of propensity do you have to build in places like Florida or Texas, uh, given the tax friendliness and business friendliness that so many executives are seeing? Yeah. This is a client-driven business, right? So we're going to position our people and our teams where they can best serve the client demand that's out there. And if that's in Florida and Texas, by the way, we've got thousands of people in both of those locations, mm -hmm. then we build out that out accordingly. But again, this is about serving our clients in the most effective way we can.